Hello everyone and welcome back to another 3D embroidery tutorial with me, That Embroidery Girl. And today we're going to be making this super cute mushroom out of woven picots. So last week I had an Amazon package arrive through the post and it was some of these really cheap, super bad quality threads that you can get just off of the internet and they're about 15 pounds or something like that and they come in a variety of colours and I thought, hmm, what can we do with this? So looking at the colour palette, I decided to go for some reds, like a deep yellow um, type of colour, a grey, a white, and really think about the colours for this project. And you can see them here. So we've got like that rust orange, that dark yellow, a light red, and I wanted some con uh, contrasting colours. I really needed a grey as well, and a white just to finish for the stalk. So I've just started off with a long Darner's needle. This is the one that I've just pushed into the fabric there. And I'm going to go in at angles with a couple of pins. So I've now got like a semicircle shape. And I'm going to reinforce that with three pins in like a triangle shape. And then another two either side of these pins. And you'll see now I've got almost like a fan. I'm going to thread up a whole strand of dark red embroidery floss on this milliner's needle, it's quite a big one, and I'm just going to put a single knot at the very end, like so. I'm going to come up on one corner and just place this thread underneath all of these needle and pin tops, like so. Bring it underneath the bottoms of the needles, be careful because sometimes they catch the thread, and then I'm just going to stitch it down. So basically now what you've got is your foundation for your woven pico. So I'm going to need to add some anchoring points. So the first one I'm going to do is here and I'm going to add a little buttonhole stitch just to reinforce it to make sure that that's not coming off at all. So like so. I am then going to start by pushing this thread through the fabric and down and then catching it so that I've got a second triangle like this. I'm then going to repeat this process again, loop, buttonhole stitch and I'm going to go up the top. So I'm going to go around this needle, around this needle and we're going to need a bottom anchoring point, so here and then back down through the bottom where everything's anchored. Now, it's really important that you remember you cannot just stitch into the fabric at any other point other than the initial anchoring points because obviously you're not going to be able to move and manipulate this shape. And to add some extra sturdiness, you're going to need to add buttonhole stitches at vital points, otherwise your thread's just gonna end up coming away. So I'm adding some more uh, as you can see some more anchoring points here and every time I'm doing so I'm making sure that I've got a button stitch a buttonhole stitch and I'm also making sure that the bottoms are kept underneath the bottoms of these pins just to steady them again here you can see another buttonhole stitch going through Now this buttonhole stitch is going to make sure that I don't actually have to go back to the base. I can just go up and go down and that's another way that you can use the buttonhole stitches. You can use it to make sure that you don't have to go back through the fabric and you're secured on that base. And this is the final one and these two middle threads will actually be used as one as you can see my needles going through two of those as if it was one and we're going to begin weaving and the weaving process is under over under over as always in all woven picots that you do now you have to be careful because it's really easy to get confused by the threads because there's so many different threads going through and up and over and crossed over so make sure that you keep your sequence make sure and you can tell by the weave that you're constantly going under over under over under over
As we get to the point where the tops of the pins are gonna to need to be go gone past, as it were, all you're going to do is start to stitch on the other side of them. You can see there, there is a tiny gap that's created. There's not really a lot that you can do about that. So I won't worry about it too much. You can always manipulate the thread once you release this woven pico from its pins. Just make sure that your weave is fairly nice and tight and even. And you can see as well, as I'm coming up against these crosses, these parts of thread that are starting to cross over, I'm just making sure that I'm I'm still weaving and not treating them as one until they actually are one at the cross point, if that makes sense. So further along down the weave, and you can see again, obviously we're gonna have more weave points, but we're also gonna have more open points as well. So try not to worry about that too much. And once you're finished, you're gonna look, it's gonna look something like this. And it doesn't look great. It's gonna look a little bit tatty because it's really hard to make a woven pico this big. Don't worry about that. We're gonna manipulate it and play with it. So what I'm gonna do now is just test it out and see how it looks turned over. So I'm kind of happy with that shape. It's kind of perfect for what I want to do. Don't worry about the looseness to the top of the edges that you can see here we're going to stitch over that anyway so it's basically we've just created our own fabric so now i'm going to pop a pin backwards so on the underneath at that very top where our stitch first went and that's because i want to create this really obviously 3d shape i'm going to grab just a single strand of red floss on a fine beading needle and stitch that top part into place exactly like you can see and i'm going to do that a few times just to reinforce the top and make sure that when i turn this over i've got a really nice little peak like so now I'm going to begin stitching this shape down, keep bending it over, pulling it backwards and making sure from the front this is the shape that you really want to see because it's very very easy to stitch something without looking and it just doesn't look very nice. So you can see now, yep that looks really much, pretty much exactly what I wanted it to look like. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this like little baggy bit at the bottom here and just stitch. And obviously as I'm stitching, this is going to reinforce any of the loose threads and all that kind of stuff anyway. So I'm not going to worry too much about that. Keep stitching and you're really going to reinforce your shape. So I'm going to keep on stitching and stitching, like I said before, just to reinforce this shape and keep manipulating it up with my fingers just to make sure that that shape doesn't get crushed. Then taking two strands of embroidery floss, slightly more rust type of color, I'm going to reinforce the base of this toadstool where the woven peacoat wasn't very steady or secure. And this is just going to give it an extra sturdiness. Make sure that when you know it's being used or hung on a wall or whatever you're gonna use this for, it's not going to start fraying and coming apart. And we're just gonna actually make it look a lot nicer as well. So just a couple of stitches, just straight long stitches all the way through. And because this is gonna be quite a rustic end pattern, it really doesn't matter if you can see these stitches, it's gonna look really quite cute once we've finished. Now that I'm super happy with that shape, I'm going to draw on my stalk. I'm doing this in just a normal pen because I know that I'm gonna cover my lines, but if you're not confident, please do use a water soluble pen that I always use in most of my videos. And now I'm going to take a rust thread, just a two strands on my needle with a knot at the end. And I'm actually gonna come up through the bottom of the mushroom and start making some fat, chunky French knots. Just be really careful when you do this, but ultimately, like I said before, you want this rustic, you know, sort of very fungus looking finish. So it doesn't have to be terribly neat. And I'm gonna carry on doing this until I've formed quite a, not like a bobbly, knobbly bit on all of its edges around the base. Don't forget we want to reinforce this area as well because it wasn't terribly strong from the weaving. So French knots is a great way to do that. It's just adding more thread and making it more of a sturdy shape. And when you want to move over to the side, you're just going to stretch, you're just going to stitch straight through all of those threads and then begin on the other side adding some French knots. 
Once you're done, it should look something like this. So I'm gonna take a creamy color out of the threads. I'm just gonna put a knot at the bottom of two strands and come up on the top and add some French knots in this cream color. Make these nice and chunky and just get them in wherever you feel like you need them. If you look on Google Images, these types of mushrooms tend not to have like loads and loads of white dots. So I'm just gonna put them a few on the top and then a few just in the middle. So you can see those first two at the top there. I'm then going to add some more in the bottom of the base. So I've finished adding my white spots now and I'm just going to knock this white colour back with some different reds just to tone it down a little bit. So I've gone in here now with a rust type of red and I'm just going to put some fine French knots just over the top of some of the areas of the white French knots but also to the sides just so we're kind of like blending this colour out a little bit. So now we're going to switch the colours up and I'm actually going to this really, really dark, deep red. And that's why it's always a good idea to have a variety of the same colour just so that you can add tones and effects. And I'm using the full strand here and this is the only time that I'll be using the full strand to do these types of French knots. And that is to just cover a huge amount of space really quickly because I'm going to cover, I would say, almost all of the top of this in this dark red colour. And you'll notice as well throughout this, the entirety of this video, I'm constantly manipulating this shape. I'm constantly pushing it back and making sure that I'm stitching in the direction that I want to see it be. So if you look back to the initial beginning of the video, you'll notice that it's a very different shape to what it actually is now. And that's because every single stitch, every single French knot, every single time that I'm pushing it back or to the side, it's changing. And that's really what I want. And I've knocked back now as well that white colour. You can just see the fine dots of white, but it's certainly not, you know, full on white like it was before. So now I'm going to want to take a white piece of thread or a creamy type of piece of thread and add that bottom bit in that's on all mushrooms, that little white bit that starts to pucker underneath. And all I'm gonna do is some straight stitches. And I really wanna do this very roughly because the top of the mushroom anyway is very rough and very rustic. I wanna echo this idea on the bottom as well. So it's just some straight stitches straight through, exactly like I'm doing. I'm using four strands from a skein here of the cream floss. I'd recommend really using four or three. Don't go for a full strand because it will just get too thick. And you can see here, just at the bottom, I'm just doing all kinds of stitches. It doesn't have to be neat or exact. They're variations on straight stitches. What I want to do is create a white line that I can see when I look down at the mushroom from the top. And you can see here from me stitching, they are really, really messy, tiny and large long stitches. Just really want to create the idea of a rustic feeling even at the bottom. So 
So I'm pretty much happy with this shape now, but I need to add a stalk. So I'm gonna use my Long Darners needle, which is roughly the same length as a stalk that I want to create. And I'm gonna come up with my thread at the base of the stalk, then go down at the top and then come back up at the base. I'm using a full strand of cotton floss and I'm gonna take that needle out of the fabric and I'm just going to start wrapping this thread around it in a clockwise direction. So this is the thread that was next to the needle when we come up. And I'm going to keep wrapping until I have the same amount of floss on my needle as the length of the stalk. I'd recommend measuring periodically just to see how many wraps you need to have and if you've reached your target. And once you're happy, this is pretty much perfect because I want enough to go underneath the mushroom. I'm just gonna pull the needle through the wraps. It can be a little bit tricky. Sometimes the needle doesn't want to go through. So just bear with it and pull carefully down on those wraps and they will come free. And once you've done that, you just wanna pull that working thread nice and tight as tight as it will go down to the base of the fabric and then you're just going to stitch down and you should have a pretty perfect bullion stitch or a super long bullion stitch and what I'm going to need to do is actually couch this into place with a couple of extra stitches just to hold it because we want sort of like a wavy line so it's just coming up from one side the stitch goes over the top and then couches it down like so So I'm going to need to fill up the remaining space where the black lines are with some bullion knots in this cream. Now I've actually left the needle in the fabric this time just to show you how traditionally a bullion knot would be created. So you usually leave the needle in but obviously because we're doing sometimes some very long ones it can be very difficult to leave the needle inside. And once you've got the amount of wraps that you feel you need on your needle you're just going to pull it through and secure. And I've actually made this bully or not a little bit messy. It actually looks really, really nice like this when you're creating the stalks. And I'm just going to put another couching stitch over just to secure that together. So I'm gonna do probably one to two more bullion stitches. Again, this is done in a non-traditional way because we do want quite a long bullion stitch here. So I'm just gonna wrap it around the needle, taking the needle out of the fabric, pull the wraps down to the base of the fabric. And again, I'm trying to keep these wraps fairly loose. You can obviously use an additional needle for this, but I do find that this, because this is a big darner's needle, it seems to be okay. Just don't pull too tightly on those wraps. And once you've gone down enough, keep measuring. If you're happy with the length, that looks pretty much perfect to me. Just pull down and pull the thread through. Now it's worth noting to make the perfect size bullion, you want to go a little bit over what you think you're going to need. Because if you undercut it or you do it exactly, you're never going to have enough. It's always gonna be slightly too short. So wrap probably around about four millimeters bigger than what you think, maybe about four or five wraps. And again, I'm just couching this into place. I can see that I'm gonna need one final bullion stitch just to cover that little black line bit there. So again, just pulling it up out of the fabric and wrapping it round fairly loosely, pulling it down to the base of the fabric. And once I'm happy, just pulling that needle and thread through, bringing it down to the base of the fabric and then stitching it down. Again, a couching stitch over, and I'm putting this couching stitch over all of the bullion knots just to hold them together. So once I've done that, I need to add some more detail. So I'm gonna take this deep yellowy brown type of color. I'm only gonna take one strand out of the skein, and I'm just gonna do a fine line where this white line was and that's just to add a little bit of extra detail just a little bit of darkness where the white is and again i'm keeping this really messy kind of just a little bit rustic and putting stitches pretty much wherever i feel like it 
we just want to add detail at this point and a fine one single strand of floss is perfect for this it's not going to take away too much but we're just adding a layer of depth and a layer of detail that we didn't have before and once I'm happy with that, I'm just going to add some little sort of fluffy bits that sometimes you see on mushrooms. So I'm going to start like I did with the bully or not, but instead of wrapping, I'm actually going to add some loops. And you can see how open I'm keeping these loops. I do not want to put any pressure to close these at all. I want to keep them really, really fine, really, really wispy in this single strand of floss. So you don't pull it down really tight to the needle at all. And this is called a cast on stitch. Cast on stitch is a brilliant stitch. Like bullion, it can look completely different um, depending on the thread and the amount of thread and the amount of pressure that you use. I'll definitely do a video on this in the future. I'm probably going to add around 10 to 12 wraps. I only need it long enough to go over this part of the stalk. And once I'm happy, I am just going to pull that needle through, holding those loops to make sure that they don't get damaged because they're so open. And I'm just going to fluff them down and stitch my needle back through. And you can see now, adding a couple of couching stitches, we have that perfect little fluffy bit. So I'm going to repeat that process at more of the base of the stool. Again, adding these super loose loops like we did before. Once I'm happy with the amount of loops that I've got on my needle, and they're really nice and loose and fluffy like this, I'm just gonna pull my needle through and then pull it down. so that it sits nicely over the bottom of the stool here. I'm just gonna arrange the fluffy little bits so that they sit like a little skirt. And I'm gonna put a couching stitch through the middle just to make sure it's nice and secure. And now for the bottom bit, because it's like a little bit of a gap, I'm going to add some super chunky French knots in the same sort of yellowy colour, but I'm using a full strand here. With my milliner's needle, I'm just going to add some super chunky French knots, just so that when you look underneath the cup of the toadstool, you're not going to see any sort of fabric, you can just see French knots. So once you're happy with your French knots, I'm just going to add a little darker grey to the stalk part of this mushroom. And I'm just going to do some straight knots, really focused in between the joinings of the bullion knots. And you can see that happening here. And it just is a really nice little finisher that adds a little bit of depth and detail. And it just gives the toadstool something extra, I think. Here I'm using two strands of embroidery floss. I don't want it too thick and chunky, just really nice and simple and fine. So I'm pretty happy with that. That concludes the tutorial. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you soon for another video.